Hi guys, it's Katie here with Life the Mundane, and I'm really excited to start a brand new series for January, and I hope you guys will be excited about it too. We're gonna to be talking about all things paper, organizing anything you can think of as far as paper stuff. So we're gonna be going through homeschool binders, how to keep records, which is what we're talking about today. We're gonna to be talking about how to make your own home binder, um, home management binder that you can have to keep chart of track of everything, um, how to do lesson planning, how I do um, our medical binders, all of that. I'm gonna talk about all of that, but not today. Today, we're just gonna talk about how to keep homeschool records. And the rest of those videos will be coming out throughout the month, so make sure that you subscribe to my channel so you'll get a notification when those come out and follow us on Facebook and on Instagram if you want to get a heads up as well. So let's jump into how do you set up a binder for keeping track of your homeschool year and what kind of things you need to keep, what supplies you need to make and what it needs to look like. So let's get started. So a couple of things I wanna jump into before I show you my actual binder and show you how we do this is, um, as always, this is not the only way to do it. There are many, many ways to keep homeschool records, but I just wanna show you how we do it. And because we have six kids, only four are currently homeschooled, but because we have six kids, we kinda of know the pain of having to keep track of lots of records. So we can help you figure out sort of how at least we do it. Maybe that'll spark an idea for you. Also, I want to emphasize thoroughly to make sure that you check and you know your homeschool laws for your state. Even if someone else has told you what they are, you know from a trusted friend who's been homeschooling forever what they are, check them yourself. Always make sure that you're keeping track of the records that you need to keep for your state because they do vary from state to state. You can check on hslda.com um, to find out those laws. You can click on the state and it'll tell you what laws you need to know and I will drop that link below. Um, but you also need to look into um, their sort of the recommendations for what to do if someone asks for your records. So I keep records. Our law does not, our state does not actually require that I keep any records. Um, but one, I want to keep record of what we've done throughout the year. And two, I just feel like it's much safer if the laws were to ever change or anything were to come into question. I want to have that all ready to go. That being said, I would not hand over my binder very quickly. Um, HSLDA has steps they recommend you go through before you actually show them. There are people who will say, well, you have to show me proof of this. And in reality, they don't have the authority to do that. So make sure that you, you get familiar with HSLDA. If you're not a member, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's like $10 a month. You wouldn't buy a car. You wouldn't own a house without having insurance. Don't homeschool without having homeschool insurance as well, which is essentially what HSLDA is. Um, you can call them and talk to them through specific issues if you're having someone questioning your homeschooling and they will assist you. So all that to say, all of those um, little caveats ahead of time, I want to show you guys what we are doing with our homeschool binder. I'm going to be showing you last year's binder because it is somewhat complete and this year's is still a work in progress. With that being said, I know you're probably thinking, it's January. Why am I worrying about homeschool records when the homeschool year doesn't start um, end till the end of May or June or whatever you end? But the truth is, is it's just like your taxes. Um, the sooner you start working on it, if you work on it all throughout the year, the much faster it is at the end and the less more likely you are to be more thorough with things. Um, when I first started this, the very first year, this is my fourth year using the system, my very first year, my binder is pretty pathetic. <laughs> it's kind of sad. Um, I wasn't keeping track of some of the things that I keep track of now. I just didn't know. And so don't be frustrated with yourself if it's not perfect. That's okay, mine's still not perfect. I've been doing it for three or four years now and I'm nowhere near perfect. But um, just remember, the more practice you have, the better your stuff will look, which is good because the more practice you have, the older kids are gonna be and probably the more important these records are gonna be. So, um, so just give yourself some grace, jump in where you can, start where you can, and you can always go back and add later. Um, but I recommend adding through your binder all throughout the year and not waiting till the last second, just because it's too easy to forget some of the stuff you've done. So let's get started and jump into looking into actually what the binder looks like. Okay, so here is my homeschool binder. As you can see, 
it is quite large um, and it probably could be much, much larger. Some people like to keep a record of each student's portfolio. They like to keep a separate record for each kid. But for me, that would be four, eventually six binders per year, which would just become way more than I could handle. So for right now, maybe we'll do that when they're in high school. And again, the records matter a little bit more. But for right now, we just keep everybody in one year. And I'm going to show you how we do that. A um, couple of things you'll need before you get started. You're going to need a binder. Um, I recommend getting a pretty pretty hefty binder here, guys. I believe this is a two inch, um, and I think that, or maybe even larger, is a good idea getting page dividers and also page protectors. Um, I will drop links to a couple of my favorite places to get like page protectors in bulk. There's some on Amazon where you can get a much larger box um, for a lot less money. Um, also, you're going to need your school samples and things that I'll show you here along. Also, if you'll notice, my cute cover is made by Hip Homeschooling Mom. If you look her up on Facebook or on her website, you can find she has all these cute printables so that your binder can actually all be labeled. I have them for each year, so they're all kind of uniform and cute, and they're totally free. So go check out her website. So let's get started here. All right, so a couple things you'll notice initially. One, not perfect, remember? Things are in here that are not where they're supposed to be. That's okay. Um, we've got our list of our days in attendance, which days we were in school, which days we were out. Um, I like to keep track of things on CD, okay? So this, our kids did a play. We had read Romeo and Juliet, and they acted out the play after we did it. And it was super fun and cute, so I burned it onto a CD and keep that in here with their school records. Um, we also keep a CD with pictures of the school year or maybe projects, art projects, whatever that wouldn't fit in the binder. So we have pictures of all of that because as homeschool moms, some of you may not, but a lot of us take a ton of pictures and there's no way we can print them all out to put them in our binder. So that's one of the ways we can kind of save some space, but still keep those records. All right. So now I have sample lesson plans. Um, this past that this year in particular, I was using homeschool planet. So it makes them really nice because you can just print them off. But those are sample lesson plans from the year. Also, um, I've just got some general pictures that we had some of our favorite pictures from this year, them doing science with dad. Um, they're all matted and pretty because we have an end of the year co-op where the kids have a display board that shows some of their favorite things from the year. And so these were on their display board and I just pulled them off and stuck them on sheet protectors. All right, and then I also see, again, not perfect. I have a whole thing of pictures that are some of our favorite pictures that didn't get mounted or pretty or whatever. So the fun thing about this, it's records, but it's also memories. So my kids love pulling out these binders and actually looking through them. Also, Hip Homeschooling Mom, she has some things for you to think about. Um, before the beginning of the school year, I try to fill this out. I don't always do it perfectly by any means, but, you know, kind of taking an inventory or score. What worked for you? What didn't work for you? She's got pages on what goals do you have for your kids? I also have a sample of our schedule, which I'll do another video about that some other time. I printed off a book list at the beginning of the year. I didn't do great with this list in particular, but it was several books that you could read uh, like preschoolers, kindergartners, I don't even remember where I got the list, sorry guys. But basically I printed out the list and then I just highlighted the books that we covered that I read out loud to them. I have found since then a better way to do this, but that's how I was doing it this year. Okay, okay. I'm gonna show you actually this year's binder when it comes to showing you the tabs that I have because I think it'll be a little easier to see because it's not as full, obviously. So first I've got goals. Goals for my kids, what I want them to work on this year. Samples of lesson plans, and this is also where this year we will put our attendance chart so we know which days and how many days we did. Reading log, remember how I said I found an easier way to do it? This is it, again, Hip Homeschool Mom. Um, hip home, or It's not Hip Homeschool anymore, I am so sorry. It is Homeschool On is what it is, they just changed the name to it and I've forgotten that. So homeschoolon.com. You can get her list, but they have cute little reading lists that match the covers for this. So um, so the reading list, you'll notice that it is blank for this year. We have been reading, trust me. I actually keep track of their reading list, um, my host homeschool planner, um, and then I just copy it over to the pretty list after the fact. Um, you could just make the list as it is, but this binder gets really bulky, as you can see, so it's not something I carry around all the time. So I just keep track of it in my regular planner and then just transfer the list over at the end of the year. 
but you've got that. You've got also a PE log. So what time, what kind of activity you did, how long you did it. Um, this I keep, I'm doing better this year. This is not something I've never cataloged before or, or, or kept track of before, but I'm trying to do better at keeping track of that. Um, also field trips. So a list of field trips that we have gone on through the year. The kids have little summary pages that they fill out. Um, if you've seen my video on finding field trips on a budget, and on our field trip group, we have a, we take a field trip at least once a month, and they fill out a little form about it. So I put that in there, and then any photos. So um, to show you from last year, here are some pictures of our field trips. So going to Krispy Kreme, and we went and did the solar eclipse that year as a field trip. I also have a sleeve protector full of different miscellaneous papers from field trips. So um, we went to a, a day at our local museum and they had a whole printout about it. I put that in there. We went and saw a music theater uh, performance of Freaky Friday. So I put the playbill in there um, and postcards of places we went. Just anything to kind of keep records slash um, a memento of what we have done. I also have a tab for special projects. Okay. Special projects can be any kind of project. So one year we were learning about the election, the election process. This is the year before this. And so we had the kids run their own election campaign. But instead of electing president, they were trying to elect what we were going to have for dinner as a family. So they had to pick a dinner in the back and they had to do an ad campaign behind it and had to... Um, to rally for their cause and get votes and the entire extended family voted and they had to we had the primaries between our family and my sister-in-law's family it was super fun but we we put in there like special um campaign posters for their meals behind this tab um also we've done unit studies that aren't necessarily in any particular subjects but that we've done that we keep those special projects beyond here as well now we're getting into a really big piece. Now, again, I've got this organized better this year than I did last year. Again, you get better with time. But this is the group bibliography page. So this is anything that we did as a group, as I did as a group, as a family. So we use Simply Stated for U.S. Geography. So obviously, we didn't learn all 50 states in one year. We just hit certain ones. So I photocopied the index, the table of contents, for any of their books that they do. And then I highlight which lessons we did. This was something we only did one semester, so we didn't do as many lessons as we could have if we'd done it all year. But we covered these four states. We covered several states over here. This is our manners course. We did the entire thing, so I highlighted it all. But it kind of just breaks down if anybody ever wanted to know what, what book we went through, what kinds of things we covered in it. But this is for anything that all the children did. Again, it's a science book where we did some science experiments. It was supplemental, so we didn't do all of it. Um, this was their expo, like I said, at the end of the year, their co-op has an expo, so I put the, um, the program from that in there as well. Just showing you real life here, um, but this year we've got better things in there as far as like everything that we've done, all the hymns we've practiced singing, all the Bible verses we're memorizing, all of that kind of stuff. I have a picture of the child in the first day of school. It's got their label. These are tab dividers divided by their name. So a list of those things. All right, so again, cute printable. Um homeschoolingon.com, but I obviously did not fill it all out. I still have to go back and fill these in, even though it's been a year later, which is why I recommend doing this throughout the year instead of waiting till the end. But I will drop a list in the description below showing you what tabs we have in our binder so you guys can follow on a little more organized than this. I apologize for all the craziness. But basically what I do is I have the child's grade and their name, and then I have printed out what everything we did for every single subject. So... They did math. Here's all the books that we use for math. Um, for reading, like phonics reading, this is what we use. For Bible, for grammar, for spelling, for writing, science, geography, etiquette, you get it. Some of these things I clarify whether it was the first semester and second semester or just the first semester. Um, I think this helps even if you try something for me. I've tried things in the first semester. They don't work. I stop. I do something in the second semester. So this helps me keep track of everything that we've done. Again, a few pictures just fun of him. Um, some writing samples that he did. I could hole punch every single one of these and put them in the binder, but it would get really full and I feel like they would rip easily. So I actually just put an entire sample in a sleep protector and I can always pull it out and read it to him. He was in a play, so I've got scripts in there to show, again, things he's worked on. He was in a science class where they were learning about the five senses. So again, I took an entire lesson sample and shoved it in a sleep protector so that I have that. More science. Um, 
this is his solar eclipse, how he did the experience and a picture of him at the solar eclipse. Any kinds of rewards that they get, um, he got uh, any kind of charts, you know, he finished his all about reading level one. and So I've got those in there. I've got flyers from things he did presentations on. Then we've got sermon notes. So this is kind of fun. Um, our church has kids sermon notes, a note sheet from the beginning of the year, the middle, these are out of order, the middle of the year and the end of the year to see how he's grown in his ability to take sermon notes. I love that, uh, being able to see that progress. But basically, that's what I'm going to recommend. For every single subject, especially book work ones, you want to take a sample of the beginning, the middle, and the end of the book. Now, mine's a little wonky at this. You can see I've got lesson 21 and 30, and then I'm at 3. That's because he was actually, we, we found this math curriculum several years ago in the middle of the year. So we finish our books um, halfway through the year. So we do, we're in the middle of two books at one time. So, um, so we have the ending of the last one, we have the beginning of the next one, and so on and so forth. I've got samples again of his grammar, um, different tests that he was involved in. I do not save everything. If you save everything, you will run into a lot of trouble. Um, his chart, for, progress chart for All About Spelling, because we didn't start that till almost the end of the year, but I wanted to get a jump start on it and everything that he's got. I've got sample spelling tests. That As you can it. see, that's just sort of a quick go through of my binder, just to explain a few things better. So like what I was saying is I recommend taking a sampling of every subject that you have and just taking a beginning, middle, and end sample. Again, unless your laws are different, pay attention to your laws. But that's what I do since we don't have any requirements of anything. It shows the progression there. I like to take a writing sample from the beginning, middle, and end of the year um, as well as those things. So some of our subjects don't earn a book work. You know, we're reading books, we are um, doing hands-on activities, things that we can't keep track of on paper. And so with things like that, that's where taking a lot of those photos, videos of projects, um, keeping those reading lists up to date, I highly recommend that. That's new to me this year, but I'm getting there. <laughs> um, keeping track of those things can help show the things that you've done. Don't forget those extracurriculars. I also have in here under their individual tabs, several of my kids are in speech therapy, or social groups um, because of different special needs. So I have samples from the beginning, middle, and end of assessments of the year for them for that, just so to see where they've grown. So I just recommend keeping that all together in one binder. Again, I will put the list below of what all those tabs were because I know that that was kind of all over the place um, and a little hard to probably follow, but um, I want this to be, just to give you an idea, to spark ideas of what you wanna do with this is work but like I said if you do it a little along the way um, it really makes it a lot easier I've actually designated a drawer in my teacher box which you can see in my home school room tour um, that I actually put anything that I'm like oh we need to save this this is a really good um, sample to show your progress so I will throw it in that drawer and then a couple of times throughout the year um, sometimes more than others I will sit down and just file those away. And um, and then I also at the very end have an others tab just for anything that I might want to keep track of that doesn't fit in one of the other categories. I hope that's been helpful to you. If you like videos like this and want to see more, because again, I'm getting ready to jump into a whole bunch of ways that I organize our, um, our papers and our life on paper. If you want to see more about this, I would love if you would subscribe to my channel. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday on making the most of the little moments in homeschooling, home management, parenting, and everything in between. Bye.